Mm. I just want everybody who wants a show mm. to have a show. Ah. That's all. You are, yeah, you are like the Warhol of the new... Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. Scholars, welcome back to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist, I'm a master educator, and I'm going to attempt to provide you the best in art historical content. If you like the video, if you like the content, follow along. I hope you'll... Yeah. <laughs> oh! Oh, it's just this weird little guy. Oh! Ow, 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 ow. Friends, today we're going to talk about one of the most recognized contemporary artists around, a master of pop art and pop culture and intermixing things from our everyday lives like Campbell's Soup and movie uh, movie stars and, and musical sorts of things and fusing that into the visual arts and that's an artist by the name of Andy Warhol. Today we're going to explore the uh, a little bit of the work, the life, and the legacy of a great American artist, Andy Warhol. The forerunner of pop art is the very well-known painter and filmmaker Andy Warhol. He was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to Czech immigrants, and he would become popular by showing what was popular. But before all of that, he started to study at the Carnegie Institute of Technology and then moved on to New York after graduating in 1949. He wanted to become a commercial artist and, in today's language, we would call that a graphic designer, but one of his first professional jobs was illustrating advertisements in fashion magazines. Although successful, he would switch gears from commercial art, graphic design type work to fine art. Andy Warhol would work with everyday type things. And this is really the essence of what pop art is. Pop art is about making artworks that are inspired by popular culture type things. Campbell soup labels, celebrities, various forms of packaging, comics, animals, and so on. In 1962, he started to add silk-screened portraits to his range of works. This was very much an influence by Robert Rauschenberg, but at any rate, this commercial process was now ingrained into becoming a fine art process. Soup's on, fat boy. Ow! Ah! No! No! Ow! No! Ow! No! After exhibiting some of his works in several galleries in the late 1950s, he would begin to get a little bit of recognition as an influential yet somewhat controversial artist. He believed that in the future, everybody could be famous for a short period of time, making the statement that everybody would eventually get their 15 minutes of fame, which is where that phrase actually comes from, Andy Warhol. Although it is true that Andy Warhol focused on seemingly non-controversial sorts of subject matters, he would also get into the controversies of the civil rights movement, religion, business, and other topics that may be considered by some to be a little bit taboo. I hate to go to museums and see pictures of the wall because they have look so important that they don't really mean anything. I think. In 1965, he declared that he would retire from painting to focus on film, although he really never quit painting. Since I didn't want to paint anymore, and I thought uh, that I could give that up and, and do the movies and then I thought well there must be a way that I have to finish it off and I thought the only way is, is to make a painting that floats and I asked Buddy Kluver to help me make a painting that floats and he um, uh, thought about it and he came up with the, uh, the uh, silver, since he knew I like silver he thought of the silver things that I'm working on now and and the idea is to uh, uh, fill them with helium and let them out of your window and they'll float away and that's one less object. 
Uh, we saw you earlier. Andy Warhol, your impressions of what took place earlier on here. Oh, I'm speechless. Side note. In the late 1960s, he began to manage and produce the experimental rock band The Velvet Underground. And also founded Interview Magazine. We're sponsoring a new band. It's called The Velvet Underground. And, uh, and we're trying to... Well, since I don't really believe in painting anymore, I thought it would be a nice way of combining... Uh, and we have this chance to combine music and, and art and uh, uh, films all together. And, uh, and we're sort of working on that. And In New York, he would make his work, along with the team and crew of other artists, in what was known as the factory. Now, most folks that are familiar with Andy Warhol pretty well understand the idea of his factory, but what is less commonly known is that there were actually three factories. Between 1962 and 1984, he would actually move his factory to three different locations, but they all kind of operated under the same formula. Each one of these factories also eventually became a huge hangout for the famous people. Individuals like David Bowie, Mick Jagger, Liza Minnelli, John Lennon, and even Lou Reed, whose song, Take a Walk on the Wild Side, which is a reference to the factory, all would hang out in the factory. At the very tail end of his career, he would become the idea man and others were paid to convert those ideas into actual physical artworks. However, it was said that the factory's only machine was Andy Warhol, saying, I think everybody should be a machine. While at the factory in 1968, there was a radical feminist who was urging women to break away from the government and destroy men who would actually assault Andy Warhol. He was briefly pronounced dead before doctors revived him. On June the 3rd, 1968, she would actually enter the factory and go right up to Warhol where he was shot. She would end up turning herself in afterwards and was committed with the mental illness of paranoid schizophrenia. Andy Warhol would spend several weeks in the hospital recovering from this injury. This event would cause him physical pain and numerous medical issues for the rest of his life. Due to the injuries that he sustained, he would wear a special protective corset under his clothing for the rest of his life. What would you say is in style now? Um, anything that's a hit. In the 1980s, Andy Warhol would become quite good friends with and a bit of a mentor to Jean-Michel Basquiat, a New York artist who got his beginnings with graffiti, and you can watch my video on him and learn a little bit more on Basquiat, but anyway, the two would actually become very good friends and have a bit of a turbulent relationship, but at any rate, it is said that Andy Warhol's passing had a very saddening and profound impact on Basquiat toward the end of his life as well. Anyway, these two artistic megastars would collaborate on several paintings, both contributing their own stylistic elements to each one of the works. Side note. In 1981, he did a series of spots on Saturday Night Live, and MTV gave him a show called Andy Warhol's 15 Minutes that included guests like Debbie Harry from Blondie, Grace Jones, artist Keith Haring, and others. He also worked for a short time as a model, and was hired to do various modeling for commercials and other things, and even was featured in a Burger King commercial called Warhol Eating a Hamburger that was aired during the Super Bowl. Does that seem odd to you, that uh, you all began to look at the world in the same way? Um, I think we just read a lot of uh, comic books, and you just happened to come out then. Well, I mean, comic books make things uh, uh, the way they are really today. I mean, the way things happen in New York now, it's like being in a Western movie. He would pass away suddenly in 1987 after complications of a gallbladder surgery. 
Andy Warhol had lived his life basically as a single gay man. And at that time in American history, being out was very much not only frowned upon, but quite frankly illegal. And so really with no family to speak of, he would leave a multi-million dollar estate that would be used to establish an endowment fund for the arts. One of the things that this foundation does is offering grants to artists who are seeking a pathway to having their work exhibited. So without question, his 15 minutes of fame has drawn out way beyond his own passing and his legacy has helped pave the way for other artists to find their path as well. I tell you what, Andy Warhol is as refreshing as Pepsi Cola, but anyway. If you like the designs and you like that kind of a pop culture uh, flair about the work of Andy Warhol, I'm going to highly encourage you to check out my friends, colleagues, and my work on redbubble.com. There's designs like this one and things that I've put together. You can check out the link down in the description and it'll send you to redbubble.com. You can check out my designs that are there. Anyway. Uh, I appreciate you coming on this ride, and uh, we'll see you very soon on the next one. You have a great day out there. I want everybody who wants a show, everybody who wants a show, to, to have, have a show. show. That's yes. all.